Hi everybody. Hope you're all having a good day today so far. Today we are going to talk about um, bounded sequences and uh, about subsequences. And what we'll be doing will be lots of things. So we have a lot to, to pack into today, a lot to do. We're going to talk about bounded sets and functions and sequences, all bounded ideas. And then the least upper bound property, the real numbers. And we're going to talk about the monotone convergence theorem. Then we're going to talk about subsequences and the bolzano weierstrass theorem. And we'll finish up with the Weierstrass theorem, which is used in economics and uh, maximization all the time. So that's a lot to do. So uh, let's get started. So uh, let's begin with the definition here. And uh, what we're going to be working with really throughout the entire lecture today is the notion of a bounded set. And everything else is going to come from the idea of a bounded set. We're going to talk about bounded functions. We're going to talk about bounded sequences. We're going to start off with the idea of a bounded set. And so uh, we're also starting with the idea of a bounded set in a metric space. And now we're going to, uh, we're not going to do everything in a metric space at all. That's just a starting point. After we get going along here, we're, go we're going to be moving to norm vector spaces to Rn, and a lot of the time in just R, the real numbers. But to start off with, we could say a set in a metric space is bounded if there is some point in the space that we'll call x bar, and that for that x bar, every element of the set S is no farther from x bar than some number m. So there's some point, some element, x bar in the set, actually in capital X in the space, although we could put it in the set S as well, it would work, with that definition would work the same way. Uh, and there's some number m such that every point in the set, every element of the set S is no farther than m from x bar, so things don't get farther and farther apart. So that's what we mean by being bounded. And then we say that a function is a bounded function. And so here we have a function mapping into a metric space, mapping from a domain D that could be anything, any kind of a set, finite set, two element set, could be Rn. D, the domain, could be anything here. And we say the function's bounded if its range is a bounded set. That, that is, if the image of the whole domain, which of course is the range of the function, is a bounded set. And the first example of uh, a bounded function is actually a bounded sequence. Because remember, a sequence is a function whose domain is the set of natural numbers. And of course, the target space could be any set, because that's the set where the terms of the sequence, the elements of the sequence, lie. So a sequence is a function where the natural numbers, n, that set, is playing the role of d in this definition of a bounded function. And so there we would say we have a function defined on the natural numbers, n, mapping into some metric space. And of course, we're naming the sequence x instead of naming it f. So x is playing the role of f. And n, the set of natural numbers, is playing the role of the domain d. And so uh, applying the definition of a bounded function to a sequence, we see that a sequence in a metric space, in the real numbers, in Rn, a sequence is bounded if the set of its images, the set of its terms, is a bounded set. And of course, those are in this metric space. So it makes sense to talk about them being in a bounded set. So uh, that's the definitions of bounded set, bounded function, and a bounded sequence, which just is a particular kind of bounded function. 
uh, in a metric space. But that's uh, it's virtually the last time we're going to see anything about a metric space here today. Um, and in fact, we don't really, we're not really going to be using metric spaces in this course. You will see metric spaces, importantly, in future courses and subsequent courses. And that's the reason that I'm introducing here and there in this course uh, the notion of a metric space and using it as a kind of a starting point sometimes. But in the end, in this course, we're working with normed vector spaces as a particular kind of metric space. And most, almost all the time, we're actually working in this course with Rn or with just the real numbers. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to move this definition over here to the right hand side of the screen so that I can keep it there when we do several things over on this side of the screen. But I'm only going to move just the part of the definition that says, uh, that tells us about a bounded set. So I'm going to leave off the part about a bounded function and I'm going to leave off this example and we'll move this over to the right hand side of the screen. And over on this side of the screen now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an example of uh, a context in which we see bounded sets. So here you'll note that we've said a subset of a normed vector space. A vector space with a norm defined on it is bounded if there exists some number m, so that's the same as the number m over here, same idea, such that for every x in the set, just like over here, the norm of x is less than or equal to m. Now that looks different than over here, because over here we said the distance between x, which would be this x here, and some fixed x bar in the space, the metric space. But notice over here on the right, where I've said actually to say that the norm of a vector x in a vector space is less than or equal to m is to say that the norm of x minus the zero vector is less than or equal to m. So in fact, in this uh, statement here, the, uh, the zero vector is playing the role of the x bar over here. And so since it's the zero vector, we can write the norm of x instead of the norm of x minus the origin, minus the zero vector. So it makes things a little easier, a little more straightforward when we're in a normed vector space. And so let me say a couple more things about this before moving to a lower level of generality, which would be Rn. And one of the things I want to say about this is that this could be a definition. So if we hadn't ever talked about metric spaces and we were just completely not interested in metric spaces, I could have used this as the definition. I could have used this as the starting point. Well, I wouldn't have had to use this notion of a metric space because you'll notice that in the example it says a set in a norm vector space is bounded if and only if uh, this existential statement is true. So that means that in a normed vector space, this statement, this property uh, of a set, is equivalent to this property over here. So this property over here is defined in a metric space, and metric spaces don't have to be norm vector spaces. We could have metric spaces that don't have a norm on them, that aren't in vector spaces. But normed vector spaces are special kinds of metric spaces. And if we're there, we could just take this as to be our definition. So I could have written definition instead of example here. That would have been perfectly okay. I just wanted to point out that it's an example of this in a more special case. Okay, so the metric space is a generalization of the norm vector space. And so now let's go one level lower in generality to Rn, Euclidean space. So we say a subset of Rn is bounded if and only if there exists some number, m, such that every point in the set S 
has a norm less than or equal to m. So notice that the, the definition here, the existential statement in the definition, in fact, the whole definition, uh, or the whole example of a set in Rn, the whole statement is exactly the same as the statement above it about a norm vector space. So what I could have done would have been just to use this statement and just click through and change where it says a norm vector space to replace it with Rn. But I wanted to keep them both on the screen so that we could see very clearly that the definition, if you like, of uh, a bounded set in Rn is just exactly the definition of a bounded set in the norm vector space applied to Rn. And in fact, that's why I should have men maybe mentioned this a little bit earlier. That's exactly why I have a put the norm vector space and Rn and the term metric space over here in gold. I want to emphasize those particular items because they're really all the same items, just that here's the most general, then norm vector space is a little more special, a little less general. It's a special case of a metric space. And Rn is a special case of a norm vector space. And of course, we can go to one level lower of generality to simply R, R itself, the real numbers. And so this is the case, of course, where N is one in Rn. And again, you'll notice that the definition is exactly the same as the definition in Rn and the definition in norm vector space. Exactly the same in the case Rn, R, except for one thing that's a little different, and that is that here I've used the absolute value instead of the norm. But of course, in R, the norm of a number is its absolute value. So I could have written absolute value as well here in this third definition, but I know it'd been correct. It's just that, of course, instead of writing, the, I'm sorry, I may have said absolute value. I could have written the norm in this third definition, but no point in writing the norm when the absolute value is, in the end, what we're really talking about. And I've added down here at the bottom that a saying that the norm is less than or equal to some number m is the same thing as saying the number x is always between minus m and plus m, if you like. So again, four different, def well, not different, four definitions of the same idea in the general case of a metric space, the more special case of a norm vector space, the special case of a norm vector space, which is Rn, and the special case of Rn, which is just R. And so we're going to work today almost exclusively down here at the lowest level of generality with just real numbers. Okay, so now I want to go back. I've now added over here, uh, again, I've added back in uh, the definition of, an, of a bounded function and the example of a bounded sequence in um, in, the, uh, in the metric space. And so, again, I have put metric space in gold because I'm going to now look at the same reduced level of generality, the same special cases for the notion of a bounded sequence. So, uh, let's uh, move here to... Uh, the norm vector space, again, the kind of first reduction in generality from a metric space, and we say a sequence is bounded if the set of terms, the set of images under the function xn, x of n, remember, sequence, sequence is a function, if that set is a bounded set, just like over here, uh, which is to say that there is some number, uh, m, such that every term of the sequence has a norm less than or equal to m. So it's no farther than m from the origin. Every term of the sequence is that close or closer to 
the origin of the norm vector space. And of course, we don't write it that way for a metric space because metric spaces don't have to be norm vector, don't have to be vector spaces. So there may not be an origin, a zero vector in a metric space. Uh, so that applies our definition of a bounded sequence in a metric space to the special case of a norm vector space. Uh, and let's also note that, now I haven't written this down, but simple to prove. In fact, it's really uh, comes from the exercise that I asked you to prove after the previous lecture about independence of norms. So it wouldn't be too good if we said a sequence is bounded um, if and only if all of the terms of the sequence uh, have norm less than or equal to some number m, if that depended on what the norm is. So if I change the norm, I get different sets being bounded sets, different sequences being bounded sequences. But again, just like we did for the open sets, where he said the open sets don't actually depend on the norm, same thing's true here. A sequence is bounded under one norm in a, metric, in a vector space, if and only if it is bounded under any other norm in that vector space. In other words, again, the notion of a bounded sequence, a sequence is being bounded, is independent of the norm we use. And as we mentioned in that previous lecture, that can be useful because some norms are in many cases easier to work with than other norms. The Euclidean norm often being a little more complicated to use actually than the max norm or sometimes the uh, city block norm. And so just as we did for bounded sets, I'm doing the same thing here for bounded sequences. Um, uh, we have the, de the, the and we could call this a definition of uh, a bounded sequence in a norm vector space if we didn't have the metric space over here. And so the notion of a bounded sequence in Rn is just taking the definition in the norm vector space and applying it to Rn. So Rn plays the role of the norm vector space. Here, the norm vector space plays the role of the metric space. And notice that everything in this definition, in this example for Rn, is exactly identical to the same uh, statement up here uh, for the norm vector space except for the part in gold because Rn down here is playing the role of the norm vector space here. And of course, again, we can go to one, lo one lower level of uh, one level lower <laughs> of generality uh, to look at just the real numbers. And down here then we say a sequence of real numbers is bounded. Again, if the set of the values that it takes on is a bounded set. And again, in terms of this existential statement, it's exactly the same here as the statement for Rn, and it's exactly the same as the statement for the norm vector space. And again, I've got R in gold because it's playing the role of Rn. Or if you like, it's playing the role of a norm vector space. Or if you like, R is playing the role of the metric space. So we're just going sort of one level of generality lower, or if we go the other direction, we're generalizing one level up to Rn, generalizing another level up to norm vector space, and generalizing to uh, a metric space.